Okay, there we go. You're a Taurus, sun sign. Your moon sign is in Sagittarius. That's your inner being reminded much. That means your mom probably moved you around to school to school to school to learn things. And traveled or something like that. And you go on adventures and you want to learn things or something to get in tune with your emotions or something. I don't know. And go on adventures and stuff, you know, to expand your mind. And you're not very affectionate. Probably. Maybe your mom wasn't either. But Taurus is there. The, the touchy and feel like, oh, it's so good. Your Mercury is in t Gemini. That's at home with itself because Gemini and Virgo rule Mercury. So it's not activating any other sign. And this is how you talk, think, and communicate. Gemini is a really fast talker. But Gemini and Mercury is kind of like you just think before you talk. And you try to talk at the right moment. You don't like to... Um, talk with somebody interrupting when someone else is talking like me. I am a Gemini Cast Against Rising, so I'll talk, 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 talk. And my Mercury's in Aquarius because Pisces, but whatever. And then your Venus is in Taurus, so you're looking for somebody who's already financially secure and stable, and, you know, you want to be with somebody that's funny, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, probably. That's what they usually do. And, uh... It's at home with itself, too, because Venus is ruled by Libra and Taurus, blah, blah. Your Mars is in Gemini. This is your sexual expression, how you get mad at people. So when you trap people in a conversation, you also make people feel guilty of, over something that you might be doing or something, just with your words. <laughs> you might make people feel ashamed of themselves with their, your, their words, even if you could be hypocritical about what you're trying to make them be ashamed of, even though that could be you, you know, that you don't have to feel ashamed of it, but you'll make them feel ashamed of it, you <laughs> know? And then your Jupiter's in Taurus, so you're lucky if you aim at anything like possessions and money and stuff like that. And pleasure and like financial security and like a business, you can own a business. And your Saturn is in Taurus. That means your dad probably owned a business and he probably was spooling you and that's where you get all your money from. Or But he's in control of it and he can take it all away from you if you're a dick about it. You know what I'm saying? And that could happen to you in life. Like all your possessions and food will be taken away from you and you wouldn't have any for just to learn a lesson about Saturn and Taurus. And you have to earn your own money um, by honest working or something. And if, like, you're a thief or something, it'll be taken away from you because it's trying to follow you in that. And you have more restrictions on that than anybody else. But you still have luck because Jupiter is your planet of luck. It's, like, expands what the sign that it's in and what it rules and that's when you aim at everything Taurus, and you'll be lucky with it. Your Uranus is in Aquarius. Your Neptune's in Aquarius. That's at home with us all, but Neptune's in Aquarius. Your Pluto's in Sagittarius, so you like to isolate yourself by going on an adventure or, like, um, study. So you're, like, really good at studying. Your Lilith is in Capricorn. No one wants to see you in a career or get money and hardworking, but you do it anyways, and you rebel, and you grow up faster than anybody else, and... I don't know, and stuff like that. Cancer is what you lack. So everybody who's in the cancer sign, like July and August or something, mothering and nursing people, the one that's emotionally intimate, being a gypsy, being um, like a family is what you came here to do. It's your purpose to have a security home and comfort and stuff like that. Maybe cooking and stuff, who knows, your crimes and Sagittarius, that's how you heal yourself, so you traveling and gambling with life or something, I don't know, and you're good at computers, only you heal yourself through your philosophy, you always thought you had like a perfect philosophy, but then once something happens, and then a little get glitch, and then you have to uh, perfect it again, and that's how you heal yourself, and you have like a challenge, like it's unwounded healing, it's like an open scar or something that you have to completely deal with, or whatever, with your philosophy, okay, your Sirius is a Virgo, your day-to-day -day routines, being a perfectionist, being charming, being like selling things can heal other people and being seller serving to others. Like you could be someone's caretaker and that would heal other people. And you might not even want or like animals, but it would be a big deal if you did because you would be more healing with animals and stuff. So do you like animals or what? you like pets? You do? Really good. Because some people are so contradicting with their Cirrus and Virgo and they don't want to have anything to do with animals. It's too much of a problem to for them is what they think is like they're like I don't feel like potty training it I'm too busy and working your palace is in Leo so you have your creative products um and you get attention for it all your creative products whatever you do and like how you decorate your house do you decorate your house really differently you get all attention for it or whatever mm. 
Not mainly my house just yet, mainly my room. Your room, yeah, you still getting lots of different decorations in the room. Uh, star quality kind of stuff. Um, your Juno's in Aquarius. You want a friend to marry, like someone who knows everything, <laughs> um, and to be a humanitarian as well. And your Vis is in Aquarius, so you're lucky with knowing a lot of stuff and being a very kind person. Blah blah blah. I don't know. That's how I explain that really fast. Um, and your fortune might be in Aries. I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, you're on the cusp of Gemini, Taurus. You're so on the cusp. Groovy, groovy, groovy. And what did you think about that bullshit? <laughs> I don't know what your eighth house would be. That's your death house, because you can't find that without your time. Hmm. So are you a Taurus that believes in love forever, or you're like, whatever. Or you flip through people. And you're alert-minded. Cool, okay. Groovy. That was it. 